1865, a photography team led by John Rieke would take photographs throughout the area in and around the city of Richmond. One of these photographs would become a staple in capturing the long-lasting toll of the war. It is an image taken in a burial ground where thousands of wooden headboards stood, in various degrees of condition, that seemingly extend beyond the horizon. This singular image would be used repeatedly in history books, TV programs, and by the National Park Service to encapsulate the dramatic toll of the American Civil War. Most of you have undoubtedly seen it once or twice, but the context behind it has been lost over the years, to the point that its original location was lost for a time. In this video, we'll be adding some more context behind this photograph and analyze the fine details behind the photograph of the Confederate dead buried in Oakwood Cemetery. First, we need to discuss the history of the photograph. The photograph was taken sometime between April and June of 1865 by a photography team led by John Rieke, a man under the employ of Andrew Gardner. His job was to capture photographs of the battlefields around Richmond for a northern public largely ignorant of these places. However, his team wasn't the only one operating in the area. Matthew Brady's team was taking photographs of the ruined city shortly after the fall of Richmond on April 3, 1865, which created a competitive rivalry between Gardner and Brady. Gardner also had other teams under his employ operating in the area. As a result, there was a drive to take photographs the other teams had not taken in order to sell them to an eager northern market who wanted to see these places in their own eyes. John Rieke would stick towards the eastern section of the city, but would take photographs in Mechanicsville, City Point, and Petersburg. At some point, he ended up going to a cemetery in the eastern part of the city where some 16,000 Confederate dead and 1,600 Union dead were buried. Oakwood Cemetery. More specifically, he took a photograph in Section C of the cemetery, where many of the dead buried there were the wounded from the Seven Days Battles. After taking his photographs, he'd continue on his journey with the photographs in hand. Once they were published, the one photograph would become widely popular as an encapsulation of the horrific toll of the war. It would be continually reprinted, adapted, and shown time and again, but during this time period, the original location of the photograph would be lost. By the 1980s and 1990s, it would be identified as having been taken in Hollywood Cemetery, the more famous cemetery on the western side of the city of Richmond, where a number of Confederate generals and thousands of Confederate dead were also buried. However, in the late 1980s, higher quality images of the photograph were published, which allowed for members of the National Park Service, such as Ranger Michael Gorman, to be able to identify the graves in the image and, from there, properly identify the location of the famous photograph. If you wish to learn more about this, Mr. Gorman has a lecture available online from 2020 where he discusses photographs from this time period. Even so, the true context behind the photograph is not well known by the wider public, which I hope I can address by taking a deep dive into it in its companion photograph. With the historical background of the image covered, let's get into analyzing the image. For the longest time, the only image the public got to see was a fairly blurry version of the image. It was hard to make out any details outside the outline of the wooden grave markers and the trees. However, thanks to the Library of Congress, we have high-definition versions of this photograph available to look at. With this, you'll probably notice something odd. The image appears twice on the same pane. This isn't a mistake, but a type of photograph largely lost to modern photography known as a stereographic photograph. A stereographic photograph is a photograph taken using two camera lenses, roughly eye-width apart, to give the illusion of a three-dimensional image. This photograph was meant to be viewed through a stereoscope 
to give the viewer a sense of what it would have been like if they were standing at that location, thereby enhancing the experience. This type of photograph was widely popular during the American Civil War, and many of the photographs taken during the war, including many of the iconic photographs we see today, were originally stereographic photographs, which we spliced to only include one side for wider publication. To give you a sense of what this would be like, I've made this GIF to show off the 3D effect. As you can tell, it provides a greater sense of depth than what most photographs, including modern photographs, don't replicate. Now, let's take a bit of a closer look at some of the details in the photograph. First, we'll look at the prominent grave marker and see that it belongs to a George W. Dawes, who was a member of the 11th Alabama Infantry Regiment. According to his final grave, he was a private of the 11th Alabama who had fought through most of the Seven Days Battles, including at Gaines Mill and Fraser's Farm, otherwise known as Glendale, only to be wounded during the Battle of Malvern Hill on July 1, 1862. He was brought to one of Richmond's hospitals, likely Shimarizo Hospital, to be treated for his wounds. However, his wounds would prove to be fatal, as he'd pass away on July 10, 1862, being buried here in Oakwood Cemetery the very same day. It was his grave that proved key in identifying the original location of the photograph. You'll also notice that many of the wooden grave markers are sagging, contorted out of shape, or have fallen over. This is due, in no small part, to the humid climate of central Virginia. Wood, as we all know, rots, and the wood used for these markers was made up of scrap wood, taken from various places to help identify where a person is buried. However, after enduring two hot and humid summers, including the fierce thunderstorms that roll through the region, they've begun to deteriorate. It was due to their deterioration that prompted the local ladies of Richmond and Henrico County to raise money for white wooden markers, and, in the 20th century, the placement of marble grave markers that remain to this day. Moving away from the bottom, we can see that there's a man kneeling in front of a wooden marker looking down at it as if to read it. The man might be a member of John Rickey's team, but, based on the few photographs we have of John Rickey, including one where he wears a strikingly similar hat as his fellow, it's likely that this man is, in fact, John Rickey himself. During this time, it was regular practice for the head of a photography team to appear in these photographs. The most notable example being Matthew Brady, who appears in countless photographs his team was responsible for taking. Just off to the left of the supposed John Rickey sighting, we can see a house with two chimneys. Now, you might be asking yourself, why is there a house in the middle of a cemetery? Some of you might be inclined to assume that the land was used as a temporary burial ground much like what we see at other farmhouses and plantations in the area around Richmond, one notable example being the Garthright House near Cold Harbor. However, Oakwood Cemetery was already established and had been established since 1854. The cemetery was the largest and latest cemetery to be founded by the city of Richmond prior to the American Civil War, as a means of addressing the overcrowding in Shaco Hill Cemetery and the completely depleted burial ground at St. John's Episcopal Church. Hollywood Cemetery, a privately owned cemetery on the opposite side of the city, had already proven itself to be a success thanks to it adopting the ongoing trend of making park-like cemeteries. The city of Richmond decided to follow this trend by buying land on the eastern side of the city that they hoped would be made into a picturesque cemetery like Hollywood. In this endeavor, they bought roughly 60 acres of farmland known as the Stone Farm. The house seen in this photograph is likely to be the original farmhouse, which was used by the family that lived there prior to the land being bought and converted into a cemetery. However, before the city could enact their plans properly, the American Civil War erupted, and the cemetery would be appropriated for the burial of thousands of Confederate and Union dead. 
Today, the house is long gone, and its general location has been reused for post-war burials. Its exact location is hard to pinpoint, but there are two likely locations, which I've marked on this map image. Finally, you can see in the background a dirt road along with pine trees. The pine trees seen in the photograph have long since been removed, but the dirt road still remains in the same location. The road seen in the background would have seen wagons carry many of the dead, now buried in this photograph, to their final resting place. To add to this, what isn't seen in the photograph, but is there, is a loop where the wagons would loop around to head out of the burial ground. Similarly, there is also a turnoff, which was used in 1864 and 1865 for burials in Section G. This pathway, though not listed on any official maps, still exists and can be driven down. However, the pathway is now grass-covered and is faintly marked out. That's basically everything that can be discussed with this particular photograph. However, this isn't the only image taken at Oakwood Cemetery. There is, in fact, another photograph taken at the cemetery, which is looking in the exact opposite direction of this photograph. The image, unlike the first one, is not as well known, but it also has a fair bit to examine, which I believe is worth looking at, if only to bring a bit more exposure to this image to the public at large. The photo was taken right along the dirt road looking down the hillside and into the nearby hollow. For reference, the markers seen in the foreground appear in the more iconic photograph roughly around this location. The wooden backboard on the white marker in the corner foreground of this image can be seen here as well as the prominent marker for H.L. Harwood a private of Company K of the 5th Virginia Cavalry, who died July 17, 1862, at the age of 28. The other grave is harder to identify, but it belongs to a man named Peter, who died somewhere between 18 and 19 years old. However, due to how faded out the lettering is and the angle we're reading this from, it's hard to discern any other details that cannot be inferred. As we move towards the background, we can see another place that helps frame the location. This pile of dirt and the markers that are out of alignment are the same ones we see in the more iconic photograph, the same ones that our suspected John Rickey stands in front of. Further down the slope, you can see the outline of a house. At first, this might appear to be a small shed, but in reality, it's the second story of a much larger structure. After spending a bit of time researching the houses in the area, mainly in an attempt to identify the house in the cemetery, I found out that the house located here on this map under the name of the Lee House. After consulting several other maps from the same time period, roughly 1862 to 1864, they all affirm the location and name of this house as the Lee House. In other words, this is, potentially, the only known image of this house in existence. Today, the house is long gone, now replaced with a thicket of woods that grow over the same location. In the far distance, specifically within this location, we can see another structure sitting on the opposite side of the hollow. Based on the maps I was studying, this is likely the C.C. Williams house, which was another farmhouse that, much like the Lee House, we don't have much information about. Much like we see with the Lee House, it is long since gone along with the farmland it was surrounded by. Today, the location is home of the Montrose neighborhood, which is a part of Henrico County. Finally, we can see faintly in the distance several roads. The road that the Lee House is situated in front of is the East Richmond Road, which is the road that the original entrance for Oakwood Cemetery feeds into. It continued on and looped into another road, which today is called Genie Share Road, which likely had a different name during the time. 
Today, the East Richmond Road extends further to the south towards Williamsburg Road, though the same connection still remains. And that's about it for all of the background details for both photographs. If there are any details I missed in these photographs, let me know. I hope all of you have learned something intriguing and I've provided some greater context behind these images. If you wish for me to cover more photographs from this time period, let me know and I'll take a look. Besides that, I hope all of you have a wonderful day and God bless all of you.